Hi, and welcome back to Simple Home and School. Today, I'm really excited to show you what we're going to be doing for my second grade daughter for the rest of the school year for her reading program. I had mentioned earlier we did the Memorial Press second grade literature guides, and she really breezed through them. Um, I was not meeting her reading or her comprehension level. I feel like I'm starting to get there now in reading um, and meeting her comprehension level. Um, she's a very fluent reader. She's definitely on a very high reading level, but I want to meet her where she's at with her comprehension. So what I decided to do is I really wanted to stick with classical literature. So I went on memoriapress.com and veritaspress.com and I made a list of the classical literature that they have for those grades. And um, we've already read Sarah Noble, we're about to read Little House in the Big Woods, we've read the Beatrix Potter books, and these are the Veritas Press books. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for free literature guides online for these other books for the rest of our school year. And if we cruise through those, I wrote down the third grade ones, and I'm going to start looking for free literature guides online for those as well. If they have a check mark, I have already found a literature guide for them. So what I have here is um, just a reading level guide. So as I look up these books here on the left. I am also looking up their reading level so I can put them in order according to their reading level. And you can look up this for free online. Just Google uh, reading level chart and it'll have the different ways that you can find a reading level. So first thing I want to do is since she worked really hard and just cruised through those books is I'm going to be doing a little bit more relaxed approach to her reading for her next two books. I feel like my daughter really grows in her reading um, when we do more of pleasure reading. So I want to kind of focus on more of a pleasure read for the next two books. So we're going to be doing The Adventures of Millie, Molly, and Mandy and Little House on the Prairie. And we'll just be doing one chapter at a time. We'll be doing Little House on the Prairie first. And then this is the storybook treasury. So depending on how much she likes it, we'll do one, two, or all of the stories. We'll just kind of go with the flow with that. And what I'm going to be using with these is if you have not heard of Sherry Hayes, she has a YouTube channel called momdelights.com. Um, and she also has a website and she makes her own notebooking pages, which is more of a Charlotte Mason style of education. And they are an amazing free resource. She is just an amazing resource in herself. So please go check out Sherry Hayes, momdelights.com and just see everything she has to offer. She really likes to bless other mamas. So she has a lot of free resources. So what I'm going to do is I'll be reading a chapter we'll, or we'll together be reading one chapter at a time and we'll be doing a different notebooking page. And we'll just, they're kind of like graphic organizers, and we'll pick whichever page works best for us. Or I guess I will pick whichever page works best for us, and we'll fill it out for comprehension at the end of each chapter. So I love this type of format where, um, you know, we'll pick out five words that she doesn't know. We'll look up the definitions. We'll write down the definition from the dictionary. We'll write the page number. I'll have her do copy work of a paragraph that will help her with, you know, grammar. And then maybe we'll do an oral narration of the chapter. She'll retell me everything that happened in the chapter and I'll write it down. And that'll be our review for one day. Or maybe we'll do something like this, just words and definitions. And then she'll write sentences for a couple of the words she didn't know. And there's just a whole bunch of different options like a dictation I tell her what to write and then she does a drawing so here's a bunch of different things that we'll do I also have um a book that I photocopied that I bought and I photocopied the pages because it was just easier to reuse them you were allowed to photocopy them and these are just a bunch of different graphic organizers that you can just google for free you know a cause and effect chart online. Um, but these are another great way just to really dissect what you're reading. So we might do some of these at the end of each chapter. Here's just a couple of ideas of different ones that you can do. And I'll quickly flip through those. And this is just really getting into the higher order thinking of each 
chapter and it will you know really depend on the type of text that you're reading which would be appropriate for your student but I think there's a student mapping one at the end KWL chart oh, like these I like the character trait web the name the trait proof for their trait cause and effects this character map is the name what a character says and does, what others think about the character, how you feel about the character, how the character looks and feels. So here's a great options for an easier way to do comprehension, but you really are getting in depth with the chapter, but you're not just sitting and just doing rote questions. So moving on, um, I was thinking the other day, well, about a month ago, that um, because of 2020, a lot of kids were home and a lot of teachers had to put their curriculum online and a lot of teachers and school districts put their curriculum online for free access and what I did is I started looking up texts from my classical literature list and I would Google, I would Google the text so I googled Pippi Longstocking comprehension questions and I started finding, finding just a slew of great quality material. So here's a teacher that put together this novel guide for Pippi Longstocking and it is amazing, amazing quality and it's free online. If you just google this um, Pippi Longstocking in her name you will find this and check this out with me. So she has quick questions, she has comprehension questions, she has you doing a comic strip to summarize the story and then she has a text connection question I mean that's all you really need for what you're reading and that is just such an amazing resource and it's presented in such a fun way for the student this was all free online so I printed this up for my daughter and this will be what we will do after those first two texts so here's just a quick overview of some of the chapters And next one, if you Google Charlotte's Web and you Google um, comprehension questions for Charlotte's Web, you will find so much stuff, you may be overwhelmed. Um, I picked up the book at the thrift store for a dollar, and I got so much stuff. I'll decide once we get to this book what we'll use. So here's a great little resource, just pre-reading questions. And these were um, character problem and solution chart that you can just keep available while you're reading. Here's character note chart, which is kind of like one of those graphic organizers, which is awesome way just to dissect your character. So I printed one of those for each character. And here is a website that a Texas school district put up for their novel study for Charlotte's Web. So it's the same format for each chapter, just comprehension questions, but also still a great resource. And I printed, I think, one more guide. Here's another one. So this one does have vocab words with your comprehension questions and activities. So don't be shy to look up um, the books that you want to use and just look up Charlotte's Web comprehension questions and you will find a slew of stuff. You do need to vet a lot of the material. Some of it is not very high quality. It's um, not something that I would use um, for my daughter to really get into the text and get excited about what she's reading. Um, so I would vet what you're looking at and wanting to use first. Here's Farmer Boy. Farmer Boy also has so much stuff and some great um, comprehension culminating projects for the end of the book. So again, I wrote the grade level for the book and I got a whole bunch of stuff for Farmer Boy, but vocab and comprehension questions is pretty much what I'm going for for a lot of the books. So that's what I printed. These ones had background information on each chapter, which was a lot of fun. 
And another book I found work for is The Borrowers. This one's pretty basic, so I definitely will either keep it basic or I'll add some of Sherry Hayes' momdelights.com notebooking pages to do with these. This is the same format for each chapter, just a couple of vocab words and two or three comprehension questions for the borrowers. And Mr. Popper's Penguins had a handful um, of stuff online. So here's one that's just journal questions that I thought was a lot of fun, where maybe my daughter could pick one or two of the journal questions that she would want to answer. And then also we have this comprehension guide that just looked like it was a lot of fun. The character trait charts, just like Charlotte's Web, I really liked that. So here's another option. I just have one more to show you. I have Stuart Little. And this was a really big guide, vocab and comprehension questions, kind of like what I said. Just focusing on this vocab, comprehension, illustrating an event and writing about it, just kind of mixing it up a little bit. Sequence events, activity, vocab and comprehension. Mention. So that's what I have. Um, I only really expect to get through Little House on the Prairie and Millie Molly Mandy. And if my daughter's really cruising through the books, we'll just keep going because I know she'll want to read. Just keep reading them because she is an avid reader. So once again, don't forget to check out momdelights.com for free notebooking pages and just Google any book you want to use and um, look up comprehension guides. If you don't find any comprehension questions, don't be afraid to pre-read the book by yourself and write down your own vocab and your own questions that you wanna use, or just use graphic organizer pages to really dig into a specific area that you want your child to learn, whether that be um, text-to-self connections, um, text-to-life connections, or um, really dissecting a character and their traits or cause and effect. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Let me know if you have any questions about what I'm doing or where I got resources for any of the literature guides. Um, this is just a great free resource. Don't be afraid to invest some time to look up some great free resources that you can use your children with because they're out there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, they're available. Um, you just need to put in a little bit of time to look them up and have a printer. So Thanks for watching. Bye.